What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. When Pokémon first came out, the roster was filled with so many creatures, and only once you were far enough into the game could you capture powerful one-of-a-kind Pokémon, and no, I don't mean the starters. There were special legendary Pokémon, and once we got more generations, they each brought in their own fabled Pokémon with their own unique lore. But these days, people seem to have a problem with the concept of legendary Pokémon, or at the very least, the way it's being handled recently. They say that legendary Pokémon aren't as special anymore, so let's see if that's true. And for the purposes of this video, I will be including all mythical Pokémon in the discussion because mythicals are legendary. I never said the inverse was true, but even if they are more special, the broader category of legendary Pokémon still covers them all. Okay, so probably the most common complaint I hear is that there are just too many legendary Pokémon. But is this really the case? Like we said, Gen 1 only had five legends, and really only four for most people because of the way Mew was handled, and then that was replicated again in Gen 2 with Celebi being added onto the end of all of the others, so one extra. All in all, that's pretty manageable. So when moving on to Hoenn, things started to expand quite rapidly. Gen 3 alone gave us almost as many legends as the first two generations combined. So was that too much? I don't think so. Sinnoh brought in even more with another 14, yet somehow it still didn't quite seem entirely overwhelming. So when we got onto Gen 5, we saw another similar number with three separate trios, so maybe these people are starting to have a point. But Gen 6 cut back substantially with only half a dozen new legends. However, that was made up for in Gen 7 when they brought in the most legends ever, and that's not even counting the Ultra Beasts. I'm not here to hash out that debate, but the Ultra Beasts behave just like legends, which essentially makes that number double to 27 Pokémon like this in one of the smallest regional DEXs. And then Gen 8 gave us another dozen Pokémon with the legendary status, so altogether, that gave us a total of 93 Pokémon that are considered legendary in some way by the games. And with 905 Pokémon as of the end of Gen 8, that means a good 10% of all Pokémon are legendary. So, is that too much? Inherently, no, I don't think so. I understand that these creatures are supposed to be special and unique, but adding a different legendary doesn't really take away from a previous one being distinctive. At least not in the way that it would with adding another one of the same creature, making them more common. Many of them do have alternate forms, but that's still just the one Pokémon. And arguably, that does make them more special when they can have powers that no other Pokémon does. But not all recent Gen Legends feel less valuable than the past ones. And true, that is a bit subjective, but what actually makes a Pokémon legendary in the first place? And I'm not talking about mechanics like only one to catch in the post-game or something. Ideally, such a Pokémon would live up to its name and actually have some kind of story associated with it in the region. The word legend is more than just a neat title. It means that there have been fables long told about this Pokémon, and that the people of the region either have great reverence or fear for these powerful creatures. Basically, you shouldn't know if these things are even real, and it'd be a surprise when you actually lay eyes on something that can be found in dusty old books and the sides of ancient ruins. So I don't think the number alone is the problem because our world has all sorts of different legends across all of the cultures, and that doesn't make them any less special. So if you ask me, that's a much bigger determination of how important a legend feels than number. Because if they each have their own story, that will set them apart rather than being overlooked in the lineup just because other ones are on the box. I mean, look at Lugia. It has a whole secret order of kimono girls dedicated to serving it and spreading its legend to the people. And at the same time, the people of Johto tell the tale of what Ho-Oh did all those years ago with the Burned Tower, which in turn leads to the legendary beasts. So it all comes together and feels meaningful when you encounter one of them. Even Celebi had some buildup in the Ilex Forest, whether you actually activate that event or not. So being an actual legend certainly helps with the legendary status, but even that can't be the only thing sometimes, because even the newer games do have that. 
Pretty much all of Sword and Shield's story were geared towards the darkest day and the ancient heroes, yet somehow Eternatus still didn't quite feel like a special legendary capture. And I've even heard some debate about Sashian and Zamazenta, but I do think that their early game fog encounter does make them feel pretty mysterious. So clearly there's something more than just a renowned presence to make something build up to at least feeling like a myth. I mean, look at the legendary birds from Kanto. There's not really much in the way of people talking about these Pokemon and their bigger impact on the region, yet they still feel somehow important when you catch them. And to me, that is the other key factor of making a legend, effort. You have to go out of your way to encounter these Pokemon. Exploring the depths of caves or a man-made power plant maze, and when you reach the end, you can see a Pokemon waiting for you in the overworld. So you know that this is something out of the ordinary. And then they won't even try to stay in the Pokeball until it's the actual capture. So if that wasn't enough of a standout, once you actually use the Pokemon with its massive power boost, you would feel accomplished in getting one of these majestic birds. And that accomplishment is a huge facet of what makes a legend feel special. Maybe even more so than lore-based exposition. Because a harrowing journey and a grueling battle to win a fabulous prize can be appreciated by anybody, even if they can't read. And I feel like this is the real reason that the newer Pokémon feel a little less important. Not because there are too many, but because of the notable lack of effort that it takes to get them. And maybe not even intentionally noticeable, but you still feel that way when you're just handed a bunch of myths without even really trying. Now, there are two ways of this. The most prominent seems to be just making them a part of the main story. Like in Galar that we mentioned earlier, the only way to get the box art Pokémon and Eternatus is just by playing the game and after enough time you'll be shuffled into the right spot and have all of the legends just teed up for you. And this is not exclusive to the newer games at all. I mean, we were directed to the Cave of Origin and Hoenn as part of the story. But personally, I feel like that buildup was done a little more in depth with the evil team stealing the sub and then their base raid and all of that. But that's just one method used for the Legends of Hoenn. There's also Rayquaza who required going up to the top of Sky Pillar. There's the roaming Eon Twins that may be annoying but still require effort in order to catch. And then of course the Regis that require probably the most effort of any Legends to date. So even if the story-based Legends are there, they only feel devalued when the other elective legends are gone. Like in Gen 8, when there were no other legendary Pokémon to speak of until the DLC, where once again, you were walked right up to Kubfu and Calyrex. There were some others that required a little more work, like the newer Regis and the Variant Birds, but even those were outlined for you with literal prompts. Even the Swords of Justice are pointed to, saying, hey, be sure and track down these guys. And while that is nice to at least have something required of me, it would have been much better to stumble across one of them from my own exploration. But the second and perhaps most egregious way of removing effort is simply the download gift. Back in the day, this actually took immense effort on your part because you had to physically go somewhere to pick it up. But since the internet connections, Pokémon have increasingly just been sent digitally to our devices and... That's it. But, used to, this would actually take a bit more from you because you were merely downloading a chance at getting the mythical Pokémon, meaning that it unlocks an event, such as the Flower Paradise for Shaman or Liberty Garden for Victini. But then, Meloetta and Genesect didn't really have much in the way of story, and it only got worse as time went on. When you look at Gen 6, you got three gift Pokémon that you basically just Pick up at the Pokémon Center, and that's that. The only elective legend from those games was Zygarde, and even he seemed so bland that they had to create multiple new forms in the next generation. The same is kind of true of the mass collection methods of capturing legends, such as the Ultra Wormholes and Dynamax Adventures. You could maybe feel the smallest amount of satisfaction with the minimal effort that it takes to reach the end of those challenges, but it even starts to make past legendaries feel a little less valuable. Magirna, Hoopa, Zerud, Zeraora, Volcanion, and more were all just dumped in our lap without any reason for us to care. I understand if they're giving away a shiny or something like that, but a whole new Pokémon that's exclusively obtained that way? So all I'm asking for is a tiny bit of narrative around the capture of these legendary downloads, or at the very least something that they can unlock once they're in the game. 
like how the Aegean IV Celebi opened doors in Heart Gold and Soul Silver and in Black and White. So next time somebody says there are too many legendary Pokémon, maybe just bring up the fact that it's actually their different treatments that temper the way we see them. Because with the exception of probably the Tapus, in the recent games they have only ever been mandatory for story progression with very little challenge, or just handed out as free samples. I mean, honestly, the recent gens keep giving more attention to past common Pokémon than the legends of today. Ideally, we would see a combination of legends integral to the region's lore and story of the games with a healthy inclusion of other legends that aren't spelled out for us and require a bit of random exploration. Or maybe just a couple of hints here and there to make you really feel accomplished for uncovering something so special. That and making the post-launch mythical gifts actually have some part of the game instead of just being stapled on. Are you listening, Gen 9? Do you think the legendary Pokémon are being cheapened by their treatment? Let me know down in the comments. Also, be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!